everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, ladies and gentlemen, we have another WWE Elite action figure set review on the brand new WWE Elite Target exclusive Legend Series 9 full WWE Elite set, I guess. This is the WWE Elite set Legend Series 9 Target exclusive, as you guys can see. Well, you can't you can't see a John Brown fit. There's, there's nothing here that says Target exclusive. There's nothing. There ain't a John Brown Target logo on this screen right now. But nonetheless, you guys know that it's Target exclusive exclusive. And a huge shout out to my man, John, for finding these for me. John's the best, man. John is the best. He goes to the stores that are local, and he finds all these figures. All these figures you see me post up, they're local, but I just, every time I go to the store, they're not there. But when he goes, they're there, man, every single time. So huge shout out to John, man. He is what makes things happen here on the channel. Huge shout out to John. Let me get a John chant. John, John, John. Getting back focused, we have the full wave here. You'll probably wonder why the hell is Undertaker without his packaging. Well, Brad, I'm glad you asked. Because John actually found Undertaker he found the full set in an extra taker so he bought the full set for himself and he picked me up the extra taker and I was like yeah that sounds good bro just keep it you know keep an eye out for the rest of the wave and then the next day he messaged me and said I found the rest of the wave like this dude's a G this dude's a G this dude is the go so huge shout out to John for that that is why Undertaker is not here I wasn't planning on doing a review of the full set but since we ended up getting the full set anyways behind Undertaker really quickly I figured go ahead and do the review guys so let's go ahead and get started so here's the front of the packaging for Undertaker there's the back doesn't even come with packaging pretty ridiculous but if you want to see the rest of the figures in the set so starting out first guys we do have Nikolai Volkov right here and you guys can see right there I saw where somebody said his head was small like like microscopic we'll have to see about that but here's your front viewing window really nice mock packaging right here a picture of the guy there RIP by the way to Nikolai Volkov another image of Volkov there you got a nice little bio read here another image rest of the figures in the wave that does it for his packaging we also have Ted DiBiase who is the chase variant in the set this is the regular version I have not tracked down the silver and pink version just yet, but he looks really good in suit. If you guys want to see the back, really beautiful image of Ted DiBiase right there. And then last in the set, which I thought was a surprise, I did not expect us to get another Tatanka Elite. We got one with Elite 47. Here he is back in Series 9 of the Legend Series. Looks really good in the white attire. Hate to tell you, Tatanka, you're probably going to lose your pants, Brad. I'm probably going to steal your, your attire and make a custom out of somebody, so I do apologize. But we're going to review you nonetheless for the good people back at the house, the My Damn Nation or the MDT people that watch the videos. Bio read here, rest of the figures, get the stuff, Tatanka, Ted DiBiase. <laughs> Uh, Nikolai Volkov, Undertaker, let's just shut the hell up and crack all these guys out of their packaging. Jesus Christ, you know what? Let's just, let's let's do a little something, something here. Let's, all right, first of all, fix the scaffolding in the back. A lot of people ask me where this scaffolding is from. The scaffolding is a little mini WWE Rumblers playset. Look up mini, look, look up WWE Rumbler playset on eBay. Maybe it'll pop up, but I wanted to do this right here. I wanted to give Undertaker a nice little sandwich right here, and let's just see what happens. So here is Legend Series 9 out of their packaging. Guys, looking pretty swell right here. I do have some complaints about some. I have some praises about others. At the end of the video, we are going to rank the set from worst to best in my own personal thoughts and opinions on the figures. And you know how I would rank them. Which ones I would want first over the ones I would want later on. And you know, which ones I would skip. And, and all that good stuff, guys. But usually when we have four figures like this, we don't do a typical review where we, you know, we cover a figure's accessories, cover it all the way, do the comparisons, and then dive into another figure and do the same thing with all four of them we'd be here till freaking, it'd probably be a 45 minute video. And I'm not even sure if you guys like the longer reviews on the regular figures where we do the two in one with AEW or WWE Elites. I just like to get in depth, man, because when I'm buying a figure, I would like to know all of the different things. I'd like to, I would want the reviewer to dissect every little bit of the action figure. So you guys can let me know what you think of my reviews in that aspect. Do you guys care how long they are? Do you appreciate all the in depth? Let me know down in the comment section below, guys. But we're going to start off with Nikolai Volkov and I guess just work our way from from left to right, and then, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll cover Nikolai, we'll look at his accessories, do the same thing for Taker, Tatanka, Ted DiBiase, and we will run through the entire deal. I need to slide this camera back, because it's way too close, and I don't want them to murder me in my sleep, like Ronda Rousey. So here we go, guys, let's dive in straight up with Nikolai Volkov. Now, I'm gonna dive in a little bit. Now, one thing you'll probably notice immediately is, I don't know if you guys noticed it when I picked him up, but, like, like look at that wobble right there. I don't know what that is, but his legs, like, shake right there, and I'm not sure what that is, because he's not on ball joints. Like, he's not on 
ball joint, so I don't know what that is. I guess it's just this body mold. It's like the Pat Patterson style body mold. And I went ahead and went and put his accessories on so you guys could see what he looked like. But this jacket feels really good. It's got a, like, I guess it's, it, it's not called, what's it called? My mind's gone blank. It's almost got like a silk feel. Silk is the, is the word I'm looking for. It's like a silky jacket that feels really good. You got the flags here on either side. On the back, you got the flag logos as well. I don't know if you could acetone this off if you wanted to put this jacket on another figure, but he also has his signature hat that doesn't really go on the figure. Like, it kind of just sits on there. Like, uh, prove me wrong, why don't you? You trying to embarrass me? You trying to make me look stupid? But the hat definitely doesn't, like, go down on the head sculpt. Like, I don't know if you guys can tell, but look how deep this is. It actually looks kind of deep. I don't know. If you have the figure, you know what I'm talking about. It definitely doesn't fit like a an Undertaker hat, or it doesn't fit like a John Cena hat. It doesn't, like, encapsulate the whole skull of the figure, if you will. Nonetheless, head sculpt looks good. I believe this is a new head sculpt. It may just be a true effects version of a former head sculpt we've gotten from Volkov, but he does have the nice Pat Patterson, fat Ric Flair, you know, older. He's got his red trunks with the flag decals there. Nothing else on the trunks. He's got the red open knee pads, the socks logos down here, or the socks painted on, and then he has his maroon and white boots that actually look very clean. I like the way those look, but that pretty much does it for Volkov. I don't really have any comparisons to do for you guys or anything like that, so I'm just gonna put this man's jacket back on, cover him up here, put his hat back on, and put him back in line. So for his accessories, you get the hat, you get the jacket, and you get the Kawhi Leonard Ricochet entrance hands. Go Lakers. Next up, guys, we do have The Undertaker. Now, this is the one in the set that I was probably most excited for. I think this is great, especially when you look at, like, the decade. This has just been the year of Undertaker figures, man. Like, 2020, 2021, they have knocked The Undertaker figures out of the park. Just think about it. You have the Decade of Domination. You have the Legend Series. You have the Elite 79 Commemorative Taker. And now we have the Elite 85 coming out. Just tons and tons of great Undertaker figures, man. I mean, I'm all for it. I, I, I'm all aboard The Undertaker figure train, you know? Nonetheless, his coat is just fantastic, bro. His coat looks great. It's like the matte coat he used to wear back in the day. It's not like the leather coat. It's more of like the, I don't even know what you would call that, but it has a different material on it. It feels really good. You guys can see how it fits the figure. He also comes with his entrance hands, you know, where he gets down on the knee and he's like, why in God's name did I wrestle this man? Giant Gonzalez. Why am I looking like this? Legend. So the Undertaker looks good. He also comes with his tie and this is the same attire. We've seen many figures like this in the past of the Undertaker. He has the purple boot covers. He also has his tattoos on here, which look really good as well. Elbow pads included. Left elbow pad, not both elbow pads. Don't get excited, Brad. You thought you were getting both elbow pads? This is what Ted DiBiase has to say. <laughs> For real, though, this, um, outside of the coat and the entrance hands and the tie, he also comes with his hat, which fixed the figure pretty good. Not as good as other Undertaker hats in the past, but I guess it's because these bangs in the face, which we'll get into. And it's a really strong Undertaker head sculpt. Let's go ahead and pull the bangs back and you guys will see the likeness to the Undertaker right there. I think this would serve as a good head sculpt even if you hair swapped it for a different Taker hair piece or something. I think this would totally work. He doesn't have ears though so that may be a problem for you but the Undertaker figure looks really really damn good and this is an upgrade from the Elite 23 figure and the Lost Legends figure. I think this is definitely better because both of those figures had fidget spinner waist but the Undertaker figure looks really damn good. He also comes with mic holding hands and they're not the choke slamming hands. They're actually the mic holding hands. So he also comes with mic holding hands in the purple glove color and they are not molded like gloves they're actually just molded purple regular hands. Next up guys we do have Tatanka who does come with his hand axe or his little axe here he's got the blue rope going around it feels solid, it feels more solid and like a tougher plastic than the previous Elite 47 figure so I'm not sure if that's a thing. He also comes with Ricochet Kawhi Leonard entrance hands that are massive and then uh, he also comes in his white gear which looks really damn good. This is the repeat, and it's not even, this doesn't even look like true effects to me. I don't think they did true effects on this. I'm not sure why they didn't, but this is clearly the Elite 47 figure made over. They just don't have the blue trunks. They just changed the attire up a little bit, and this head sculpt is definitely not on true effects. Like I said, he's got his little neck collar thing. He's got his bicep bands, his wristbands here, white tights going around. You got some arrows and stuff. Red line here on the crotch, more arrows going on on his, on his pants. Red in the front, black belt design, white knee pads, which look really good. Boots look good in the white color with the feathers and the arrows again. And this guy is on ball joints, so that is just excellent. I think I'm going to use this to make my Ziggler in white attire, finally. I think. I don't know about that. It'll just depend, you know, I I, I don't know the rules about Tatanka and white attires and making a Dolph Ziggler, and I'm just going to shut the hell up. So not much to Tatanka. I definitely like this one over his Elite 47, even though I feel like, I, I feel like when I look at the Elite 47, that's what I picture for Tatanka instead of this white attire. I just like the white attire more, if that 
that makes sense. And every time I see Tatanka, I think of the random SmackDown intro. Shout out to you if you know what I'm talking about. And I won't be denied. All I got left is my pride. And I will rise. Oh! Getting into Ted DiBiase, guys, he also comes with his interchangeable screaming face. So he comes with two interchangeable head sculpts, which we've seen before. We got this with his Hall of Fame figure, and we got this with his Entrance Greats figure, and we've gotten this on a few basics before. I think this is like our second or third suited body for Ted DiBiase. I know we've had his wrestling attire before. We've had his Entrance Greats where his whole getup was in cloth, which was really cool. And I want to say we've had a suited Elite. I may be tripping, but I feel like that exists. I, I could be wrong about that, but there's your two interchangeable head sculpts, which look really good. I like the way this figure feels in the hand a lot. One thing that I'm noticing about him, though, is that he is uh, he's a little short, man. He's definitely way too short. Tatanka is supposed to be 6'2", and Ted DiBiase is supposed to be 6'3". Look how much he towers over him. Like, that is definitely an issue there. Nikolai Volkov is supposed to be 6'4", which I guess would work out if they were all accurate, and then you guys know the Undertaker's massive, so we ain't gotta worry about that, but clearly Ted DiBiase is undersized. Not the biggest deal, but it definitely bothers me. I feel like he's definitely too short but the money signs look good with the gold and black on the jacket. You can't really open this up. The arms do pop out like an Ultimate Edition, so it's like a Build-A-Figure. Like, straight up, this is like a Build-A-Figure. I don't know if he'll separate at the waist. It doesn't feel like it, but his arm, one of my arms did pop out. Yeah, see that? So the arm did pop out like a Build-A-Figure piece, but I don't think the rest of the figure, I don't think the rest of the figure is a Build-A-Figure, because I can't pop it off at the waist or anything like that. All right, let's do that. Let's go ahead and top this off. Let's see. All right, so this is what it looks like without the jacket you guys can see the black going around here and stuff like that it does have a tight waist swivel so it's not like loosey-goosey he can kick like these articulated legs right here are really nice he also has boot feet black and gold stripes like and i couldn't separate this so i guess it's not a build a figure but his arms are build a figure like and i don't know if you could pop in ultimate edition arms or something like that i don't know if that's even a thing all as i all i know is that my mdt figure needs a new suit for my damn nation i know that and i want the chase variant ted dibiase so i can make like an mdt custom suit or something for that show. I think that would be pretty badassery. But, I'm gonna put all this ish back together. Outside of the... Outside of that, you also have mic holding hands. You also have choke slamming hands. He comes with a silver briefcase because, you know, we need some freaking money in the briefcase. And then we have the million dollar championship, which we've seen multiple times before. It clasps and it's much smaller than uh, the rest of Mattel belts, which it was in real life, so that's pretty damn accurate to me. Just kind of hooks together right there and you got the million dollar championship. Anyways, guys, if I were going to rank this set, I would rank them as as follows. I would go Nikolai Volkov at the bottom, just not really connected to the character. I respect the character. I respect Nikolai Volkov. Just was never, like, huge on him, and I think his accessories are impressive, and he also has the little wobbly-dobbly leg deal. But regardless, number three would be Tatanka. Again, very similar to Nikolai Volkov. Just don't really, you know, don't have much connection to the character. Was never, like, an over-the-top fan or anything like that. Respect for him. Just not my favorite. Number two would be Ted DiBiase. Love the suit. Think he's a little bit undersized and stuff. Okay, now that I'm looking at it, what the hell's going on here? Hold up. Now the Tatanka doesn't look like it's towering over the Ted DiBiase. He's still taller, though. And then number one, did you expect anything less, Brad? We have the Undertaker. The, cl the coat is great. It's an upgrade from his Elite 23 predecessors, the Lost Legends, all of that good stuff. It's the Undertaker. It's just a badass figure, man. I mean, what did you expect? I feel like a lot of people would rank him number one, if not close, but that doesn't for your Legend Series 9 Target exclusive figure wave review. Let's get into our random shout out before we get the hell out of here. So this shout out is going to go to R&B World 1 who says MDT forcing Heath Slater to watch his video. Slater. Come on, I got kids, man. Let me watch it with them. MDT, this shit is not for kids. I thought that was funny because that ties back to the this shit is not for kids intro that we did when all the cop of BS was coming out and we were terrified. We didn't know what the hell was going to go on and now we've come to find out that nothing really changed anyways and I thought that was a pretty funny comment. So huge Shout out to RMB World 1. Good stuff right there. But I think that about does it for the review, guys. Thank you so very much for watching. I hope you guys did enjoy the review. Let me know what your favorite figure from the set is. If you guys have grabbed it, did your target get these? Let me know everything down in the comment section below. But I'm getting out of here, guys. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. And uh, don't cross the line, Brad. Or uh, you could end up.